Now we're going to look at the Lady Juno automatic feed pusher. This wouldn't be that well known in the Irish market, and we will admit as a business, we've only really got into it in the last 12 months. Um, you will hear uh, some feedback from Derek O'Halloran on it, and we have six installed at the moment, getting on extremely well. We've now a lot of confidence in this product and we can see a market for it. So we're gonna make everyone aware of it. So what it is, is a system that literally goes along the feed barrier and pushes in the feed. And it can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you have a situation where you feel you need to push in your feed on a regular basis, this might be an option for you to consider. So it normally does a route around the feed uh, passage is about every two to three hours, depending on the farm. Like the other products, would, would need a site visit to determine whether your yard is suitable. But the feedback from customers is they're getting higher intakes, stock are looking fuller, and dairy guys have claimed that they're getting a bit more milk. Beef customers are just saying stock are more content, less bullying, um, they can maybe stock pens a little bit heavier less sorting of feed and less feed being dumped interestingly. So feedback has been exceptionally good. We're, we're, we're very pleased with, with, with the testimonials that we're getting. It's very, very flexible. <clears throat> it can go with, between a number of sheds. It can actually travel one kilometer on a charge, which is a lot of distance. Um, you don't need any feed bunkers, but you may need some metal strips if it's traveling outside just to keep it in the direction it needs to go. Otherwise, it's bouncing a signal either left or right off a wall or a feed barrier. Uh, again, charging a 12 volt battery, it's very, very easy on power. So costing about 50 euros a year to run. Um, but we do understand that, you know, it, this might be a product that people might need to try before they buy. So we do have a farm demo model available. So if you're interested, you have the option of having a demo for a month to see how well it works. And what we would do is we try to come to some agreement that, you know, we'd understand each other. We'd, 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 um, you might have to do a little bit of work in your yard just to make it suitable, but in the main, not an awful lot. But if you are interested in a farm demo, something you want to consider, give us a call. We'd be delighted, delighted to talk you through um, how it might work for you. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you a short video of a testimonial from Derek O'Halloran. He only has it in six weeks, but I think his experience is very interesting. I'll let you hear for yourself. Uh, we installed a Juno here uh, roughly six weeks ago uh, just to see could we uh, get any extra litres out of the cows and maybe save a bit of labour as well. Um, so far, uh, we're up between two and a half and three litres per cow. Uh, the, show, the, the, the intake of the cows has risen 200 kilos on the full of the wagon. Um, they are uh, definitely fuller in that the cow, is, the, the, the cow herself is fuller. When I go with the wagon now, they're not rushing to the feed. We were feeding out the wagon, three quarters of it was fed out at, at night when we filled it at, at say seven o'clock. We were pushing in with a wheel on the front of the loader um, eight o'clock the next morning and feeding the rest out. Then we'd push in with the wheel at lunchtime uh, and then five o'clock again with the, with the wheel and then that was it until the wagon was filled again. So we were pushing in quite regularly, but still it, it wasn't enough. Uh, we're, we're feeding an average of eight kilos in the robot and five, kil five kilos at the feed head. Uh, two kilos of straw, um, uh, uh, a kilo, two kilos of molasses, um, the rest is uh, silage. We're averaging at the moment, we're averaging 36 litres. Uh, per cow, uh, it's, still a, it's still a young herd, there's a lot of, still on uh, first lactation in here. This year they should average 12,000 litres. Last year as heifers they averaged 10,000 litres. When we feed out at night time, the, uh, in say 7 or 8 o'clock, whatever time we feed out at, the Juno then runs at 10 o'clock and the first two pushes would be further away than the second two or second four pushes after that. As the feed is used by the cows, the Juno pushes it in further. 
it comes round the shed um, on the first run from the charging point, then it steps in six inches and goes back around the shed to the charging point again. And from 10 o'clock, uh, the first run at 10 o'clock in the evening, it runs every three hours until five o'clock the next evening. Uh, and then it, at five o'clock it stops, gives us a chance to feed out and maybe scrape away what's, we try to scrape away every day what's not used. Um, and then it goes again at 10 o'clock again. The advantage of the Juno in labour wise is we now feed the whole full diet out now in the evening so we have no pushing up or letting out half the wagon again so it has actually saved us I'd say a good hour or maybe, maybe even a bit more than an hour a day uh, by the time you get into a tractor, pick up the wheel and push it in, you don't find 15 minutes going and you do that, we do, we're doing that a few times like during the day so even getting into the wagon and feeding out was nearly another 20 minutes so there's no problem, an hour, an hour plus a day is saved in labour. Oh, well the investment as you know is, is quite easy to justify in that we were lucky and we managed to get as I say two and a half to three litres so when you add that, that up at milk price um, at milk price today, like it's going to be more than paid for in the first year. So, and, and the cows are healthier and, and fuller. It's, um, you see that the cows are fuller, so everything should go better. I had looked at putting feed bunkers in, and it was going to cost about three and a half thousand for an eight bay on one side. So, uh, to do with uh, both sides, and at the end, it was going to come into a substantial amount of money but I'd still have to get in every day and grape out what's not used, um, which would take time. I'd have to physically grape it out, which was going to take time. So um, that, was the one, that was the main reason. We were actually quite busy here, so we tried to keep uh, our labour as efficient as possible. Oh, I'm extremely happy. I'm extremely happy with it so far, yeah? If it keeps going like this, I'll be more than happy. Thanks very much, folks. Thanks for your attention. Um, delighted to introduce Connor Clark. He's one of our senior engineers. I know he looks like a young fella, but he's almost seven years' experience with Lady Munningar. Um, very well trained, very well educated, one of our experts in farm robotics and automation. So, Connor, this is going to be like the rapid fire buzz around. We try to get through these as best we can, okay? And, uh, yeah, I'll have a go ahead anyway. There's a question there. From John, how does it handle zero graze grass? Uh, our experience of the Juno with zero graze grass um, would be that if you're dumping out a fair big lump at the start, John, we would suggest, well, you have to really, to be fair, you'd have to push in maybe the first time with your loader or your, your, your wheel or whatever system you might have, because it'd be too much grass, more than likely for the Juno to be actually able to move it. Um, so we normally find maybe for the second half of the day the Juno could kick in, kick in and then start pushing in the grass. But look, to be fair, John, it does depend on the length of your feed barrier and how much grass you're dumping out at that feed barrier. And look, we have visited farms and we work in confident that it would work well. Um, but there is a demo model. So if you wanted a demonstration, um, what we would what we would well, look, we want to be reasonably <coughs> work to do the demo, to be fair, because we don't want to waste your time either. But feel free to contact the office. You know, if uh, it looks like it could work, we would be we would be interested in doing a demo. Uh, another question from John: Can you feed on a Saturday and not have to feed again till Monday? Ha! Ah, good question. Look again, depends on the amount of feed you're putting out, how deep it is. The longer the feed barrier, the less deep. Um, the feed is the more chance is that is a possibility. Uh, again, a site visit uh, would determine that. So, yeah, look, it's a hard one to call. Uh, that is quite common up the north and, and in, in Europe that people would do that. Um, so, we'll, again, we'd have to look at the site. Uh, a question from Colm How many times per day can it push? Well, I suppose, Connor, it can work for 10 hours a day. So, that's a hard one to qualify. It kind of really depends on how it, it can travel 1000 meters on a single charge. Yeah, that's what they're saying. They'll um, work 40% and charge for 60. So that's 10 hours work a day, you know. So you can, it depends how many routes you have and 
many times you want to push it in, really, isn't it? Just that, but forty percent, that ten hours, that's how much you can work a day. Yeah. So typically, a, a, a common situation is that the feed is pushed in every two to three hours. Mm. That's kind of the most common, uh, the common situation. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your attention. If anyone wants any further information, if you just call the office here in, in Moningar, Lily Centre Moningar, we'd be delighted to talk to you and we look forward to meeting you sometime in the future. Thank you very much.